Hey guys, welcome back to Clutch Kit Garage. Today we're gonna to be installing an oil cooler on the E46 wagon. Now I'm not using it necessarily for oil, but I am using it for a fluid that gets hot. It's for power steering fluid. It's a small, as you can tell by my hand size, it is a relatively small uh, cooler. However, it does way more cooling than the factory uh, cooling coil. The factory cooling coil is literally one loop with no cooling fins. There's no great way of cooling the power steering pump short of stock driving use. And as I'm gonna be drifting this car, I want as much cooling as possible for that uh, power steering rack and pump because as anybody that's ever drifted knows, that's like one of the first things you burn up is a rack or a power steering pump by it getting overheated. So one of my ways to combat that is to install a cooler. Now, I've never dealt with any A, Mishimoto products, and B, AN lines. Now, this is kind of an upgrade for me because it's going to be a lot more serviceable in the future. I can take it apart, put it back together, and not worry about leaks because it's all machine fit and it's all made with really high quality uh, aluminum. I have some Summit Racing. Uh, fittings and I think I don't remember which one it's Spectre or something something like that it's gonna be my first time working with AN lines but uh, I've watched a bunch of videos on it and it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward I think it's more of like once you get the hang of it it goes pretty easy from there but basically without it being super frayed you want to cut this slide on a collar and then it goes together just like a uh, compression fitting would it's the same concept. All right guys, I already have the front end of the E46 taken apart, so for me it's gonna be a little bit easier to get at this. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's probably gonna be easier if you can, you know, at least remove the radiator. Um, so right here, it's kinda of hard to see, I have really poor lighting. So here is my, I believe, return line, or this is my return line, this is my sending line. Um, that comes back from the cooler, and this is sending to the rack and the pump. So this, both of these lines are gonna get a uh, male barbed fitting to female um, AN, and then I can just screw on my adapters from there and, and just take off from there. So it'll be pretty straightforward, but I wanna get the fittings in while I have room, and then I'm gonna put the whole front clip back on, and then I can kinda plan fitment and route of the lines um, from there. So let's get started. All right guys, so you see I have pretty easy access to these lines and that's definitely gonna help me out. Um, I went with dash eight fittings, which are, I believe, half inch uh, OD. And these lines are very close to that. So I'm gonna have to heat these up. I don't know exactly what these are. I think they're a half size, but I could be wrong. But I'm gonna heat them up with just basically a glorified hair dryer. Get them a little bit soft and then slide these in using a little bit of a little bit of grease here. So just using a little bit of lithium grease to kind of help those fittings on there. I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. Wipe it down onto the barbs. Should slide in a bit easier. the barb right in. Boom. Just like that. She's in. I'll do that with you. This one's going really hard. Come on. There we go. 
now that both of our fittings in, we can go and take off the uh, female to AN section. And I've also, these are barbed fittings and this isn't necessarily a high pressure line, but I'm gonna use a set of hose clamps anyway, just to make sure I have a good connection. It didn't have to be reefed super tight. Again, the whole purpose of doing this is just to make the system more serviceable in the future as I know for a fact I'm gonna be ripping apart the front end of this car. And I plan on running M54 style uh, engine blocks for the foreseeable future as they're cheap and plentiful right now. That and I like them. I have no intention of doing anything else crazy for a minute, so. I just want to make getting in here and servicing the uh, stock blocks easy. I'm going to wrap some tape around those just to kind of keep this from catching on anything and chafing. Next up, you're going to want to throw pretty much everything on the front end of your car that's going to be in the way so you can run lines and trim to fit. So next you're going to want to put the whole front end of your car back together so you can route lines and basically test everything where it's going to be when the car's back together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Did you know this is my biggest fan? It's my only fan. Oh. Now lucky, luckily for me, I've already got this front end stripped down and it's basically as basic as, basic as possible for easy future service because as often as I am underneath this hood, I want this thing to be easy to tear into and tear apart. Now I am going to have to make a bracket for that. Um, I'm going to have to make a bracket for the cooler itself. And that's why I kind of stripped down this front end to make it as easy as possible for the car. Alright guys, so now that we've got the bumper on, I'm basically kind of visualizing where I want to put my cooler. And I think I'm going to mount it on top of the bash bar. So this is the bottom of my bash bar. This is nice and solid. This I can mount to here. So basically I'm going to kind of clear a path so that this can sit just up here on top of it. I'm going to have to trim a lot of the plastic. This whole plastic like floor basically is going to get cut out. Um, before we ripped this apart, this was for directing air up into the radiator, but I have so little things blocking air from flowing into this engine bay that that's not going to be an issue. So basically I need to trim off this whole piece of plastic, which will be pretty easy as it's thin enough. I can probably cut it with a pocket knife. So I'll just pop my bumper back off, my handy dandy bumper locks. Boom, bumper go. So I'm gonna have a forward mount on this setup, which really I could remove this whole, whole lower half. So this is basically going to be the bracket that I'm going to mount the cooler to. Now this bracket is going from here directly onto a piece of round stock tubing. So basically I'm just going to trace out the round stock and you already know it's going to fit because this is the same stock that I used to make the bash bar.
got my bracket made up for my cooler. I'm basically gonna duplicate this in reverse for the other side, but I know it clears my bumper cover and all that. So basically I just need to duplicate my bracket, uh, clean up a spot on the bash bar, tack them into place, and then finish welding them and then I'm all set to start plumbing lines. Boom, they call me maker of brackets. This is not how you're supposed to weld, by the way. You're supposed to have a mask. Welder. I'll go get my mask. Boom, weld it up. We got ourselves a cooler. All right guys, so I kind of, I did a one for practice. So this is basically what it looks like when it's done and all compressed on there. And now I'm gonna kind of snake it through and see what my lengths are. I'm gonna dip the return line down and thread it on. I think I'm gonna trim this piece. Look how this is all just brittle and breaks. Let's go do an AN fitting. This is mildly stressful because I only have the exact amount of fittings I need, which means don't mess up. So basically, with as little amount of fraying as you can possibly manage, for your own sake, try and cut the line. They make loppers, which cut it a lot smoother and a lot nicer. I don't have those. All I have is my four inch grinder for now. So basically you're gonna take this, make sure you get all of the loose ends in there, push it all the way in till it seats against the back end of the fitting. I like to take it's the second time I've used this in this video. I like to take some PB Blaster lithium grease and just kind of put a little bit on there. It helps it slide into the, the fitting a little easier. This one's kind of cool. It's, this is the higher quality fittings that I got compared to the Summit Racing ones, which the Summit Racing ones are good, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, these Spectre or whatever brand I can't remember, are uh, a lot, lot nicer. Also, there's a chuck you can use for this particular application, but because I'm poor, I'm using a rag. Basically, you're gonna hold this assembly kind of all together and thread it in. Wow, these are really nice fittings. I can already tell the difference between Summit Racing fittings and this brand. There wasn't a huge price difference either, so I'm kind of surprised this, this one's going together a lot nicer than the other one did. Oh, these fittings are just so satisfying to put together. You're done and it's just like, it looks so perfect. I like to line up the flats, because I'm OCD. Now I can plumb in my first AN line. I take my 90, take off the cap. assemblies I've ever done. Just twist it together. Because these are all machined to exact fit, it's like a, a compression fitting or a machine compression fitting, whatever you want to call it. They go together 
super easy. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, sorry, uh, my camera footage got corrupt and I ended up not being able to finish the video. So this is several weeks after I finished the install. I'll show you what it all looks like. This is how it all came out. It's super neat. It's very clean. So basically, AN lines are a really uh, clean and neat way to organize some of the chaos that is either vacuum lines or coolant lines or high pressure lines. Basically, any form of line that's in your engine bay, you can pretty much swap out in place with either PTFE line or a nylon style AN line, which is what I went with. I think it looks super clean. This is all you can see, and you can barely see that under the bumper cover, but it came out super neat. I'm gonna be doing more videos as I use more and more AN lines going through in the future, so you're gonna be able to see more content like that. That's gonna wrap it up for our AN power steering cooler line setup. It was my first time working with AN lines. It was really easy and a lot, a lot less complex than I thought I was gonna be going into it. I was kind of nervous because I only ordered the exact fittings I needed. And they were very forgiving to work with. Um, I got all of them from, through Summit Racing. Um, but I had no issue even being my first time working with it with no special tools. The only thing I had was an adjustable wrench. That was my fancy tool that I used to assemble these things and uh, a grinder. Like, so even if you don't have the exact specialty tools to do it, you can still do a really neat job and have a really nice, clean, finished product. Um, we're gonna have more stuff, especially BMW stuff coming out soon, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you wanna follow me on my social medias, there's gonna be my links to TikTok and Instagram in the description. Um, I'm really excited, we're gonna have a lot more BMW stuff coming up, and it's gonna be sick. I'm so looking forward to this thing being on the road, getting it track ready. I'm excited.